Praise the Lord. And the, the Word of God says and reads, Therefore, you got it, right? Chapter 5. Therefore, be imitators of God. Be imitators of who? God. As dear children and walk in Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornicators and uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as it is not fitting for the saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse gesturing, which are not fitting, but rather given of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator or unclean person or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Finding out what? And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Awake who? Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine. Do not get drunk with what? But instead be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for the things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 21 says, Submitting to one another in the fear of God. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. My first point that I want to touch on, and I quickly want to touch on this point, is to be imitators of God. In other words, imitate love. Who, who knows what love here is, right? Because love does what? It covers a multitude of sins. Now, as we read in the earlier chapters, and the sermon series is called made worthy to walk worthy, meaning that there's nothing you could do to really inherit this eternal life through Christ Jesus. Christ already did it for you so that you can walk in that worthiness. You are not worthy by your own works, but you are made worthy through the Son, Jesus Christ. And we saw that in the first three chapters, Paul was forming this godliness inside the church, telling them that they are worthy already. And because they have been made worthy to not live in that guilt of the past, but walk in that worthiness. There's nothing you can do to make yourself worthy. Once again, everyone in this room has fallen short of the glory. Every one of us has fallen short of the glory. No one is more worthy than the other. If Christ is with you, then you are all equally worthy through the Son, Jesus Christ. Ain't no one greater even if you have gifts in this, in this room, you're not greater than the next person. The moment that you think you're greater than the next person, you've already failed. Right? We must keep a what? A humble spirit. But some way, somehow, in chapter 4 to 5, the old nature of the man that was in the church of Ephesus started creeping in. So 10 years later, Paul is writing this letter to the Ephesians, and he's writing it as a as a, as, a, as a prisoner in Rome, he was on house arrest. And he's writing this letter because he heard that some way, somehow, the church of Ephesus was going back in their old ways. Some of them even tried doing it by works. Works of the law is what I'm trying to say. Not works of the spirit, works of the law. 
trying to earn this salvation. And you know what the Bible says that, that the law empowers sin. So if you try to live according to the law, you empower sin because you're going to fail. That means you're going to fail bad. So it is not by, by works of the law, but it is by grace that you've been saved. So maybe you wasn't worthy before you came to Christ, but when you came to Christ, you were made worthy. So the whole point is walk in that worthiness. So you are worthy now. If you're in this place and you believe that Christ forgave you, it don't matter what you did. I'm literally saying it don't matter what you did. If before Christ came and David was an adulterer and he was forgiven by God, imagine now that Christ is here. If before, if before Christ came, if you murdered somebody and it was a two for a two for an eye for an eye, and now that Christ is here and he called Paul, this man that's writing this letter, and now he's forgiven, imagine that type of grace. So you, you, you have been made worthy. Worthy not by your own works. The moment that you think that you're worthy by your own works, again, you fail. It is not by works, lest any man should boast. But it is all through Jesus Christ. So now Paul, 10 years later in Rome, he's writing this letter. Because another teaching has creeped in. Remember, there was, there was a war in the spirit, right? There were, there were also Jews in this vicinity who, who remained under the power of the law. And were trying to persuade the Ephesians. But then there was also idolatry worship in Ephesus. There was the, the temple of Diana, which was... A wonder in the world at that time and Ephesus was a busy place so Ephesus was like a New York if you've ever been to New York recently you understand how crazy New York is right now I went to Times Square a few weeks ago with my wife and Times Square was crazy I mean I looked over here there were people trying to preach Islam over here I looked over here there were people trying to preach a uh, Jehovah Witness over here I looked over here, there were Christians trying to preach over here. I looked over there, there were people practicing yoga in a yoga position, humming. I was like, okay, I feel like I'm in Ephesus right now because that's how Ephesus was. Ephesus was a place of theology and a place of, of wisdom also. Remember, this was next to Athens, which Athens was Rome. And Rome had a lot of idolatry and pagan worship. And, and there were philosophers at that time. So people would go from place to place to learn philosophies. So now God called Paul to plant the church in Ephesus in a place of war, spiritual warfare. And Paul planted the church in Ephesus knowing that there was going to be war, knowing that there was going to be spiritual and physical opposition. And in order for Paul to have planted this church, there was also physical war. They wanted him arrested. They arrested him. It was just crazy. Because God was planted his, his, his kingdom in the place where Satan had his kingdom. You know that when you plant your kingdom where Satan has his kingdom, there's going to be war. There's going to be opposition. That's why every time you try to even uh, 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 worship God in your own house, and maybe you once was a, 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 an, an idolater, a pagan, a heathen, right, before you came to Christ, in your house there's going to be war until there's a settling until there's a settling, right? Because at one point, we all once belonged to Satan. But then Christ empowered us. And through Christ, we overcome. So Paul reminds them. In other words, like even Jesus told the church, return to your first love. So Paul is reminding them, be imitators of God. And it says right here, therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. Love is the main thing. If you can't walk in love, you don't walk in power. If you can't walk in, in love and you're trying to do the work of the kingdom of God, you walk in under the power of your flesh. That means that God can't back you up. But when you walk in love, you are walking not on your own accord, but you're walking through God because the Bible says God is love. So if you want to walk with power, you have to walk in love because God is love. And by this, all will recognize that you are my disciples. What? If you love one another. Love is the ultimate ingredient. It is the key. Paul says, be imitators of God. 
And I spoke about this before, but I'll speak about it again. My son imitates everything that I do. If you got children, you know what I'm talking about. My son, he's, a, he's five years old. He imitates everything that I do. But I'm pretty sure when he gets older, he's, he's going to some way stop imitating me. Right? But he should continue imitating me because I'm going to lead him in the right direction. And just like us believers here, we're called to imitate God. But don't grow so much that you stop imitating God. Can I get an amen? Come on now. You're not, you're not too good not to imitate love. Don't allow your head to grow. Don't allow the, the knowledge to puff you up so much that you stop humbling yourself in the presence of other people. Because Christ was humble, him being the master coming out of the throne, he humbled himself. He went to the lowest place and washed his disciples' feet. The washing of the feet were for the servants. So Nate imitates everything that I do. I told you guys that, right? If I go to the bathroom, he tries to go to the bathroom. I got to close the door. Like, what you doing, man? Leave me in peace. Nate. If I, if I start getting dressed, guess what he does? He puts on my shoes and he... He goes into my closets and put my suits on. He's imitating me. God spoke to me through this. If I go into the refrigerator, he goes into the refrigerator and I'm looking at him. If I grab something to drink, he grabs something to drink. And that's why I say this, that we must be careful how we lead our children because they're imitating us. Did I ever tell you guys a story about the man, the lawyer who would drink in the morning? There was a lawyer who in Chicago would go before he had to go into work to, his, to, his, um, to, to the courthouse and, and, and do his work as a lawyer. He would go into the bar and sneak a, a few shots. And one winter morning, he went into the bar. And took a few shots. And when he came out, he saw his son. He's like, son, what are you doing here? He's like, I was following your footsteps on the snow. Straight to the bar. And, and that day he repented and said, God, forgive me. And he never drunk again. Your, your children or those around you will follow how you are. You are filling them right now. And it's very important that we become prime examples of the love of God. If we imitate God and we do what God is doing, our children will imitate us and they will grow in the way of God. And I leave it to say this. In the book of John, chapter 5, verse 19, it says, Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. That was the prime example right there. If you want to be, listen to me, if you want to be qualified according to the scriptures, you have to do what Jesus did. That's your qualification there. You get disqualified, not because you're a sinner, but because you, you don't do what Christ is doing. Because if you don't do what Christ is doing, you're building your house on sand. And when the storms come, what happens? And great will be the fall of that house. But if you hear the words of Christ and you put them into practice, you're building your house on a rock. So if you imitate God, if you imitate Christ, if you imitate the scriptures, you have a sure foundation. Amen? So we should imitate how Jesus walked. We should carry ourselves and do as Jesus did. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 says, walk in love as Christ also has loved us. That is the greatest lifestyle that you could ever offer up to God, is to walk in that love. That is the love of Christ. It's a love that cannot fail. Look at your neighbor and say, walk in love. It's amazing that, the, that even Paul said that you could prophesy, you could heal, you could do miracles, but if you don't walk in love, you're a sounding symbol, and God doesn't even hear you. Amen? My second point that I want to speak on, 
and I'm just going by what the scriptures say, is you are children of light. Who believes here that you're, you're a child of light? Raise your hand. I'm just, a few people didn't raise their hand. We got a prayer room back there. I'm going to throw some oil on you. But we are children of light. <laughs> Everybody raise their hand. Like, oh. Let me do it again. If you believe you're a child of light, raise your hand. Hey, Kiara, raise your hand. <laughs> We're children of light. We are children of, if you're made in the image of God, you've been born again. Not, um, let me tell you guys something. When it says you're made in the image of God, it has nothing to do with your skin. Anybody tells you that God is, is flesh like this, that's why when it comes to white or black skin, that has nothing to do with God. God is not black and God is not white. I could, I could prove it by the Bible that the Bible says his presence was like sapphire and like emerald, which is it's like a diamond. There's false teachings going on out there. And understand that the, what, what, uh, with, uh, what John saw was visions. He, he saw things in the form of vision. So it's not literal. When it's talking about feet of bronze, it has to do with judgment. I, I can prove it by the scriptures. So Jesus is not white with blind eyes. Okay? He's not white with blind eyes. And he's not black. He's holy. He's in between probably. His skin color was probably light brown when he came to earth. I want to get that out of the way because many people are teaching things that is not even biblical. It's not. Okay? So don't, don't see Jesus as your nationality. Okay? So then when I say that you're made in the image of God, the Bible says that God made man from dirt. God is not dirt. God is spirit. Can, can that wisdom talk? Can we talk with wisdom here? God, he, he wasn't made from, from the dust. I went to a Mexican church and I saw Jesus with a sombrero. I said, no, no. I'm serious. People try to paint Jesus to their nationality. And that's wrong. If anything, that's idolatry. It is wrong. Okay? Whatever color Jesus was, he's my Lord and Savior. So let that kill any argument or any thinking that you might have because God's ways are higher than your ways. Praise God. Amen. You are children of light. God is what? God is fire. He's an all-consuming fire. That's why you can't come to God in your nature. You would die. You would literally die. That's why we need Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. When we think about light, we're not talking about a light bulb. We're not, we're not talking about a glow stick. We're talking about fire. And the hottest fire is, is blue and white. It's blue, really. It's the hottest fire. That's why the Bible says he's like, an emer like, like, like a sapphire under his feet. Like an emerald, which is green. It's that green and, and, and blue fire that, that you see in the fire. The, the one that's in the middle. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 and 10, I go on with the teaching. For you were once darkness, but you are now light. Wow. And the Lord, walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit in, is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Find out what is acceptable to the Lord. That's a key right there, to find out what is acceptable to the Lord. But another thing that really gets me is that you once were children of darkness. Uh, when, we, when we talk about darkness here, we're talking about a lifestyle that you would do things in hidden, but you no longer have to do those things because you are now children of light. You are children of God. So once again... Paul is calling for a change. And last week we spoke about a call to change. That God is calling us to change. And once again, call, Paul is calling for a change as he's writing this letter to the church of Ephesus that you once were in darkness. But now you are children of light. He's reminding them that you don't got to live that lifestyle no more. Christ paid the price of those sins so that you don't have to do those things no more. Also, so that you don't have to live in the past shame. Because there's times that 
I could be praying and the enemy will, while, while I'm praying and I'm rejoicing in God's presence, the enemy will bring up my past. I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. This ain't. And let me tell you something. When that happens, that is not the spirit of God. So when he reminds me of my past, we do what? <laughs> I remind them of his future. I literally remind them of the future. Okay. But Christ already paid the price for me. I remind them of his future. I remind them where he's going to go. You, you're going to burn, boy. And the beautiful thing about this Satan, is that you're separated from God. I'm not. So don't be hating because I'm going to be in the place where you once was. Don't be hating. Don't hate on me, Satan. So I know that's not the voice of, of, of the Holy Spirit of Jesus because the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to what? To condemn the world, but to save the world. So when I hear that voice of condemnation, what sparks in my mind? That's Satan. Because he's the what? He's the accuser of the brethren. But we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So I testify, I, I once was that man, but that man died a long time ago. I'm a new man. I'm a new creation. And you know what's the beautiful thing about regeneration? If you know anything about regeneration, that if you did fall between the time that you got first saved till now, you could still get regenerated. If you, any, if you know anything about, I watch Discovery Channel all the time. And I used to live in Florida. So when I was in Florida, I used to take those lizards that are everywhere. I used to break the tail off. And you know what happens? That tail grows back. It's called regeneration. That is a possibility. Maybe you got cut off because of some sin. But if you came back to Abba Father, he says, I regenerate you. You are reborn. You will, you will grow again. I will restore you. I will give you and replenish you. I will give you back the authority that Satan has taken from you. I give you back life. Because for this reason, Christ has come to save that which is lost. That's the reason why Christ came, to save the lost. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I didn't find God. God found me. Amen? So Paul is reminding them about the change, that you once walked in darkness, but you are now children of light. And when that, when that, when that, when that was probably read, it probably convicted them. Conviction. If, if you read, let's say you was, Living in those days, 62 AD, when the, when, when the, when the, when the letter was written and was, and was given, I'm pretty sure they made copies of it to spread it all around the churches. When you read that, that you once were in darkness, walk as children of light, and if you were slipping, that should bring enough conviction to say, wow, God, forgive me, I repent. Because the word of God, and I say the word of God because though Paul wrote it, he was inspired by the spirit of God. It was as if God wanted to correct the church and bring the church back to a place of order, of, res of respectable order, because they were in the midst of heathens and unbelievers. So that church that was planted in Ephesus was the light in that region. That church was the door for the sake of all the lost. So you see the importance of living in such a way. What he was trying to say is that you once were darkness like the rest of them, but now you are light. That church was a lighthouse in the midst of a place that had storms, spiritual storms, spiritual chaos. And that church was the means of people finding their way out. Because that church represented Christ on earth. That's why the Bible speaks about the churches that Christ walks around. And the book of Revelation and Ephesus was one of the churches and he's walking, and the Bible, the Bible points the church out as a lamp. He's walking. And the lamp does what? It gives light. So Christ is looking to see if the light is dying, to see if the fire is dying. So he's 
He's watching the church and analyzing why is this church dying. And the only way that a church will stop giving light is if, or a lamp will stop giving light is if it has no oil. The oil has stopped flowing. And we read in the book of Matthew chapter 25 about the ten virgins. Five were five. Uh, five were foolish. Five were wise. The foolish ones had no oil. And the representation of oil is that they had the, they had the spirit, but they stopped flowing in the spirit. That they stopped walking according to the spirit. In other words, and when I say spirit, they stopped doing what the word says. Because Jesus says my word is spirit and life. John chapter 6 verse 63. So the way we cut the oil from flowing is if we stop doing what the word of God says. And, no, and then we stop shining light. That's why Jesus says in the book of uh, John chapter 8, after he finishes teaching the adulterous woman, and he says, neither do I accuse you. He says, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me should not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So what happens is as he's looking at the light and is dimming, he knows that, they, that, they, that they're not following him. When you follow Jesus... You walk in light. You reflect his light. Because you are not light, but he is light. So because of his light in you, you begin to shine the light. That's why David says, your word is a lamp to, a feet, to my feet and a light onto my path. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. The word of God is the light. Amen? So Paul is calling for a change. Reminding them to walk in this light. That they should be imitators of God, who is the light. But then in verse 10, Paul says, finding out what is acceptable. As priests, when a priest in the Old Testament would offer up an offering to God, he had to make sure that the offering would be acceptable to God. The offering couldn't have flaws or defects or else God would not receive it. If the offering had spots, it wasn't good enough. If you could give God something that's better, give God what's better. If you have a sheep that may be worth more, in other words, give me that sheep that's worth the most. Don't give me, don't give me the, the, the lame one. Don't give me the one that has spots that, that if you sell it, it'll be cheaper. Give me the one that's most expensive. Give, give me the best one you got. The one that has no flaws. So that was acceptable to God. And now Paul is saying, find out what is acceptable to God. You have to find out what is acceptable to God. You got to find out what you know you could give God so that God can receive it as an offering. The book of 1 Peter, we, we, we went through it, right? Chapter 2. We just went through it on Wednesday. That we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. If we are priests, then we are also offering things up to God. And and I spoke about this, that when John speaks about, or James speaks about, show me your works and I'll show, you, I'll show me your faith and I'll show you my works. He's literally not speaking about the works of the law, but he's speaking about works of the spirit. Yeah. Show, me, show me your faith, because many people say they have faith. And he says, I'll show you my works. Yeah. That we can say we have faith, but if we don't show our faith through the works of the spirit, spirit. by walking in such a way, in such a manner that is holy and acceptable to God, we fail as people because we are a royal priesthood, holy priests through Christ Jesus. So if we are priests, according to the word of God, then we're supposed to be offering something to God. And that, and that offer is our worship. That offer is our lifestyle. That we should find out what is acceptable to God. And God says, love me with all your strength, heart, soul, and mind, and, and love your neighbor as yourself. That is an offering to God that is acceptable that God desires mercy. He don't desire people's sacrifices. And we're talking about animals here. That God desires your mercy instead. Show me your mercy. Show me your love. Show me that my son Jesus Christ really dwells in your heart. I need to see Christ in you, says God. 
I need to see Jesus Christ in you, the Holy One. Because this is the only way that we will enter into the presence of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to God but through me. It has to be through Jesus. Amen? No other way. This is Jesus speaking. No other way, but only through him. So we have to find out what is acceptable to God. And then Paul goes on to say in verse 11, to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. That if you are light, according to the word of God, you are the light of the world because of Christ in you. If there's an unfruitful works of darkness, expose it. Expose it with the light that's in you. Not to expose somebody like this, like, hey, you sinner, I saw you at the bar. Not that type of exposure, right? That's not what we're talking about here. Because God, God doesn't, God operates in love. God doesn't want to hurt people. God doesn't want people fleeing from him, right? Like, okay, I'm never going to come back to this place again. But God wants to love you so much that the darkness that's inside of you through his light is exposed and gone. That he would convict you with his holiness. When I first started walking this walk, there were a few people that were really holy around me that it would, it would convict me to the point that I was like, God, I'm sorry because they're giving you more than, than I give you and I want to give you more. And it would challenge me to be a better man, to be a better believer in Christ. It challenged me, and you know what challenged me? It wasn't that they challenged me. It was the light in them that challenged me. It was that light. I saw, they were the example. God didn't even have to preach to me. The exam, they, were the, they were the letter that we're walking. And they were living in such a way that I say, God, I feel convicted. I feel so convicted because I know that I could do more. I know that I could give you more. This is the works that we're talking about. We're not talking about works of the law. We're talking about works of giving God our heart, giving God our hands. We lift up holy hands. Giving God our offering. And God will receive the offering. And God understands the weakness of people. He understands that some of us can be weak. He understands that some of us are growing in our faith. And like a good father, he understands. But the purpose and the point here is that you're growing. That you're being fruitful. That you are growing. Because I know that it's all grace. It's all by the love of God, not by works. But God also expects us to grow. That we can't remain unfruitful. Because right here it says, expose the unfruitful works. Even in yourself, allow the word of God to expose your unfruitful works and say, wow, God, I've been stagnant. I haven't been fruitful. I can do better. I went back to the very things that you called me out of. If you did, okay. Surrender. Die to self and say, God, here I am. What could I do? And allow Christ to shape you as an individual. And he'll do it. Because we we are all called in this house for the kingdom of God. Many are called, but few are chosen. Chosen meaning that they decided to take the step of faith. They decided to walk after God, to give it everything. So many are called, and we're all called in this place. You all have a purpose. Each and every one of you has a purpose under the sound of my voice. The whole point is, would you walk after the purpose? Would you answer the call? And let me tell you something. When God calls, it's not spam. Some people will get that. Because I get a lot of calls on my phone, but not all of them are good. When God calls you, it's not spam. It's important. So you don't ignore God like you ignore spam. You answer the call. Jesus says, I knock. Patrick, he's knocking. And he says, if you let me in, I will sit down and dine with you. 
And you know that if Jesus sits down and dines with you, he's going to talk with you. He's going to tell you your purpose. He's going to tell you what he has created you for. Stacy, I'm knocking. Sergio, I'm knocking. I'm knocking. He's knocking. He's knocking. Erica, he's knocking. Will you let him in? Because when Christ is in your house, everything changes for the better. When Christ comes in, everything has to change. Nothing can be the same no more. Amen? So Paul says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. When I think about being children of light, it means that we can no longer sit unnoticed. Can I repeat that one more time? That we can no longer sit unnoticed in a place of darkness, partaking with unfruitful deeds. That if I'm a child of light and I sit in a, and I was once sitting in a dark room, my, the light that's in me will expose all darkness. You know, people stop inviting me to barbecues in my family. I'm cool with that. People stop inviting me. Because the light. The light changes everything. Did I ever tell you guys when I was backsliding? I was serving God, but I was, this was years ago, but I was drinking. And God understood my weakness. So I would drink on Friday. I'll be hungover on Saturday, and I'll go to church on, on Sunday. It's always crying, God, forgive me. I'm sorry. Help me. Help me. Help me. But yet still, the love of God was in me. My, my mistake was that I kept drinking. And I would be in a bar, and I will preach to people in the bar. <laughs> I'm serious. And I, I would feel so guilty, but the love of God was in me. It was rooted in me. That even in my drunkenness and my sin, I would tell people about Christ because I couldn't stop speaking about him. And I would, tell, I would tell the bartender, I just want to tell you, Jesus loves you. Give me another shot. <laughs> I'm being honest. Until one day, I, I came into the bar fresh. I was going to order a drink. Somebody came next to me and said, I feel like you don't belong here. And they walked away. I was so convicted that I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm out of here. I repented. I repented because whoever that person was exposed my darkness. They exposed me. I felt so hypocritical and so convicted. I fell before my face and I said, God, forgive me. Forgive me. Because it took somebody or maybe an angel, I I don't know, right, to shine the light of, of, of the love of God in a dark place to show me where I was standing so that I can not walk in that thing anymore. So that's why it's so important that you, children of light, walk in such a way that the light that's inside of you will expose darkness with love. Are we learning something here? Amen? Paul said, expose them. Now, once again, the exposure that we're speaking about is not gossip. It's not, it's not hypocritical exposure. It's an exposing with love, a godly love. You know, the Bible says that light and darkness has no fellowship. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 and 17 says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? 
And what accord has Christ and Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. God wants to receive us. And this word, these letters are not here to condemn us. They're here to expose us to get us back to God. Right? God doesn't want to condemn you. God wants to save you. The Bible says, I desire for all men to be saved. And when we say men, we mean women as well. He desires for all to be saved. Amen? My third point is, wake up, open the window, and let the light in. Mm. I'm going to say that one more time. Because I could have just said, wake up. But the Holy Spirit said, write this. Wake up, open your window, and let the light in. Mm. Mm. Because, you know, some of us, we wake up. And the shade is still down. We wake up, the shade is still down, and we continue sleeping. We continue resting in that bed. But when you wake up, you open up the shade, make it a little uncomfortable, open up the window, let the light in, let the air in. You really wake up. Man, my son Nate, five years old, he got his own room. He got bunk beds, he got two beds. I'm like, Nate, why you got to sleep with us? Like, Nate, what's up, man? He even got a little bed next to our bed. I'm like, what's up with that? I'll wake up at five, 6 or 5. My wife wakes up at 5. She's like, a, she's like military. She's up in the morning. God bless you, my wife. I know she's watching. She's up in the morning, and she's downstairs reading. And the first thing that she does, she reads the word. And she reads the word, and then, and then she goes on the Peloton bike. So she, she has an order how she does things. And she keeps to that order, and God honors it. Because she does it before the kids wake up. And then I wake up at 6. And then when I wake up, I turn on the light. And then my, son's, and my son, he, he, he makes that little growl. Like, Ugh. He puts, I'm like, what are you doing? This is my room. <laughs> right? This is my room, Nate. Like, what are you doing, buddy? But what gets him to that place of growling and, and turning over is because I turned the light on. The light. And when you expose people with light, sometimes they may not like it. Well, we've been there, right? Somebody tells you, listen, what you're doing is, Kiara, what you're doing is wrong. Mom, I know that. <laughs> Brother, what you're doing, I know that, Pastor. You don't got to know. I got to tell you. Jose, what you're doing is, I know that. Because the light, right? Not that they're doing wrong stuff. I'm just picking on people. Because the light exposes things. Brenda, what you're doing is wrong. I know that, Pastor. I know, I know the word of God. <laughs> Frank, what you're doing is wrong, Frank. Nah, he's a, he's a, he's a saint. He's a saint. <laughs> but that light exposes. And it's not for the bad. It's for the good. You know, I advise you, if you guys see me, if you guys see me do something that's out of order, let me know. She's like, I can't wait. I'm going to let you know. You got me? I'm going to get you. Don't worry. I'm going to get you. But let me know. I know I'm a, I know I'm a pastor. Come on. But I, I'm, 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 also, I'm also a brother just like you. I'm also a sister. You know, like I'm, I'm human. If I do something out of order... Now, don't do it in a wrong way. Sit me down and say, hey, Pastor, I, I saw this and I saw this. And can I correct you on something? I'm like, of course. 
You have to humble yourself. We all need correction. We all, we all need correction. Sometimes I'll correct people through a scripture, or I'll, I'll, I'll send them a message like giving them a sign I'm correcting you, even though I don't do it like confrontational. And only the wise will understand when I'm correcting them. And, a, and a, they continue doing it, and then I sit down with them and I correct them. Not, not to harm them, but to better equip them. Right? I correct my children a different way. But I correct the congregation another way. There's ways to correct things. So correct me if you see me out of order. I give you permission. I give you permission in Jesus' name. Wake up, open your window, and let the light in. So we're going to go from verse 14 to 16. And it says, Therefore, he says, Wake, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Wow, that was good. Paul calls for the church to awaken. Not only is Paul calling for the church to awake, but Jesus, in many scriptures, warns the bride not to fall asleep. He's warning the bride, stop sleeping. And we don't mean a physical sleep, obviously, right? We mean a spiritual sleep. That you awaken. That you awaken. Because when Christ Jesus comes, he's going he's to come at an hour that you do not expect. He's going to come on a day that you are not aware of. Man, thank God for his mercy. Thank God that he didn't come when I was doing my wrong. Thank God when he, that he didn't come when I was out of my ways. Thank God that his mercy endures and that he's waiting. He's waiting. His patience is great. His mercy is great. That Lord Jesus, whatever I'm doing or whatever anyone is doing that's out of order, that you're just waiting for the, for the fulfillment of all things to come and all the people to come. That when you do come, Lord God, that you catch us watching he speaks about the servant that if the master of the house leaves and when he comes back if he, if he finds the servant doing such things that he told him to do he will reward that servant he talks about a servant being at a door watching for his master to come so that he could open the door for him that if the master of the house comes and he has a servant in the house and when he comes in the servant doesn't open the door when he's there to come in, how dreadful it's going to be. That's going to be not so good. So he says, watch, because the Son of Man comes at an hour that you do not expect him. I always give the illustration about the, about the thief, that if you know that your house is going to get broken into tonight, how many of you will actually sleep? Right, Stacy? If I say, Stacy, I got word that a thief is coming to your house tonight. You're going to be like, what? Let me know. Will you sleep or not? You're going to be up waiting. Like. Give me the butcher knife. Right? You're going to be up waiting. Like, where the thief, where the thief at? I'm going to be waiting. You ain't going to fall asleep. Ain't nobody going to fall asleep in this place. You're going to watch for your house so that your house don't get broken into. You're going to watch because you heard that a thief was coming. And Jesus said he's coming. Yet, though Jesus said he's coming like a thief, many people are still falling asleep. Many people are still falling asleep. Oh, let's just say, and you guys could use this one. This is one that God gave me. Let's just say that the weatherman comes on and he says, there's a Category 5 hurricane coming to Connecticut. And it's going to be the worst hurricane that's ever hit Connecticut. It's going to destroy houses. Roofs are going to get ripped off. And we advise you, you got four days to get ready. Buy all the food that you can because this hurricane is going to last weeks. How many of you would just stay at your home, not board your windows up, not get your house ready, not get your car ready? How many of you guys would do that? How many of you guys will go to the store and start buying supplies? How many of you guys will start preparing your house? Because the storm is coming. You'll prepare your house. 
You'll prepare your family. You'll start getting flashlights. You'll start getting extra food. You're preparing because you, you heard the weatherman say that a storm is coming. Well, I'm the weatherman today, and there's a storm that's coming. And that storm that's coming, it's going to hit hard. And that if you're not ready, that storm will destroy you. Find refuge. I'm the weatherman. I'm telling you that a storm is coming. And the Bible says that the name of the Lord is the strong tower, that the righteous run to it and they are safe. It's funny because an evangelist or a preacher says Christ is coming and nobody gets ready. But when the weatherman says a storm is coming, everybody gets ready. Christ is coming. Jesus is coming. And he's coming for a church without wrinkle, spot, or blemish. He's coming for a church that's watching. He's coming for a church that has her lamps lit and filled with oil. Jesus Christ is coming. The king of Nazareth, the, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Israel, the king of the universe is coming. And he's coming very soon. And his reward is with him. Jesus, the king of glory. Jesus, the great I am. He's coming on the clouds with angels, with the sound of a trumpet blast. I feel the glory of God in this place. He's warning the church, I'm coming, church. I'm coming, church. I'm coming for my bride. When he comes, will he find faith on earth? When he comes, will he find fruit hanging off the tree? He's coming. Look at your neighbor and say, he's coming. Verse 13, 11 of Romans, it says, chapter 13, verse 11 says, Besides you know the time that the hour has come for you to awake from your sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. Revelation chapter 3, verse 2 and 3 says, Wake up and strengthen what remains and is, and is about to die, for I have not found your words complete in the sight of God. Remember then what you have received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. My last point is, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible mentions, Paul mentions, not to be filled with wine. The Bible never says not to drink wine. I understand there's people in this place that you might have a cup of wine with your steak, and I'm not here to condemn you. I'm not here to convict you. But the Bible says don't be filled with wine. Don't get drunk. If you're drinking wine to get tipsy, you're doing it for the wrong reason. If you drink a cup of wine to clean your stomach, I understand that doctors may recommend that you do that. And Christ doesn't condemn you because of that. But if you drink wine for, for, for drunkenness, now you're in trouble. The Bible says get filled with the Spirit of God instead. Be filled with the Holy Spirit instead. So now we understand that wine is also used for communion. That even at the Last Supper, Jesus shared wine with his people and said, this is the covenant, the new covenant, the blood of the new covenant. They didn't get drunk off of it. They had a sip of it to commemorate what God is, what, what, the new thing that Christ is doing, the new covenant. But what Paul means when he says, don't be full of wine, but instead be full of the Spirit, is because it's easier for you to be deceived when you're not sober. It's much easier for people to be deceived by our enemy, Satan, when you're not sober. That's why the Bible says, be soberly minded, for your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. When we're not soberly minded, it's easier for us to get devoured by Satan. That's why the Bible says be sober. But when, when, when we think about sober, it doesn't just mean alcohol. There's so many things that can intoxicate our minds. 
You know that hate, hatred could intoxicate your mind. Lust can intoxicate your mind. Alcohol can intoxicate your mind. Pharmaceuticals could intoxicate your mind. Marijuana can intoxicate your mind. Being around atmospheres that are negative can intoxicate your mind. It says be soberly minded. If I'm in a place where people are practicing the fruitless deeds of darkness, then those things will intoxicate me to the point I'll start practicing them. The Bible says if you hang around wise people, you will become wise. Whoever you hang around, you become like them. You talk like them, you act like them, you live like them. That's why the Pharisees, when they saw Peter, they, they, they knew that he was with Jesus because he talked like Jesus. He acted like Jesus. That boldness was like Jesus. Who are you hanging around? Get around people. Get around people that are challenge you to become better. Get around people that are challenge you to become fruitful. Get around people that are tell you what's wrong and what's right. Don't see them as people who are trying to uh, uh, control your life. See them as people that God has sent to keep you accountable. I don't want to be around people that's not going to challenge my faith. I want to be around people that have challenged me to become a better and stronger husband, a better husband, a better believer. I want to get around people that have challenged me to pray more. I want to get around people that are open, like, like, like we, we came together, they hang out, but they open the Bible in front of me, like, oh, wow, you challenged me. That's why I bring my Bible everywhere I go. I, I, I had a meeting with somebody, they wanted to have lunch, I brought my Bible, I made it all about God, and we spent three hours together, and he's like, wow, I didn't expect it to be all about God, but man, I needed that. Yeah, because if you come around me, I'm about my father's business, I'm going to make it all about God, I ain't got no time to be playing around. Christ is going to ask me what you did with what I gave you. I got no time to play around, Brother Tremaine. I'm on a mission. I want to see, I want to see territories of Satan destroyed. And in the place of where Satan's territory was, I want to see the kingdom of God built in that place. We are the army of the living God. We're called to take territory. I want to see families and marriages flourish. Yeah. I want to see people and they're call, calling, walking and they're calling. Yeah. I want to see trees that weren't fruitful. I'll dig around them and wait one more year. Yeah. And I say, Lord, just wait one more year. Don't kill them yet. Yeah. Wait one more year, God. Yeah. I want to fertilize that ground and see the fruit come out. Yeah. Because the Bible says the wise save souls. That's the call. I feel a stirring in the spirit right now. That's what we're called to go to. That's what we're called to be. That's what we're called to do. Christ made it simple. God, I don't know what to do. Go to Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. He'll tell you what to do. Go into all the world. And all the world doesn't necessarily mean go to Europe right now if you don't got the money. All the world means everywhere. And preach the good news. And to them that believe, right? Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That was the command. There's churches teaching now that you don't got to get baptized. That's heresy. I'm going to stick to the scriptures. I'm not sticking to nothing else. Even if people say, man, you too radical, you too. I'm sticking to the scriptures. You better stick to what's safe. I'd rather stick to what's safe than to stick to a new doctrine that was born 40 years ago. Come on now. It says, it says, teach them to observe all things that I've commanded. So if I go to a church that's not teaching the scriptures, and all they're doing is preach, 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 preach but no teaching, I'm getting out of there. Because Jesus simply said, teach them to observe everything that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Come on, somebody give Jesus a hand of applause. So as Paul goes on to exhort, rebuke, correct, and lecture this beautiful church of Ephesus, 
he also teaches them how they should speak to one another. After he says, be filled with the Spirit, he says, talk to each other in hymns and psalms and in spiritual songs. And the reason why he's teaching them this is because Paul was wise. He knew that if we speak to each other in hymns and songs and in spiritual songs, there's not going to be no gossip in our midst. See, Paul put, a, Paul put a barrier like, after you're filled with the Spirit, now this is how you ought to talk to each other. He put a barrier so that we don't cross and go back to gossiping. But stay in this lane. Instead, talk to each other in hymns and songs and in spiritual songs. And this way, we edify each other up. This way, we build one another up in the most holy faith. This is how the church is built. This is why Paul needed to lecture this church who he once lectured in person, and now he has to rebuke, but also lecture through letter. It wasn't for their, for their wrong, but it was to edify them so that they could walk in holiness. Who wants to walk in that holiness? Praise God. Praise Him. Listen to this. God is calling for the church Yes, to grow in the natural, but also in the spirit. God is calling for every one of us to mature. And God is calling for every one of us to put our hands to the plow of the kingdom of God. To put your hands to the plow. To put your hands to do the work of the kingdom of God. Because time is running out. There are people that you can reach that I can't reach. You know how people say, God doesn't need me. He could do it. No, he needs you. Who told you the lie that God doesn't need you? He needs every one of us. We are vessels. We are the instruments that God wants to breathe through. <sighs> that God wants the spirit of God to flow through. I, I can have an instrument here. The instrument will do no good if I can't breathe through it. I can have a flute. If the flute is clawed, I can't breathe. The whole purpose of the instrument is to breathe through it to make a beautiful melody. You are God's instrument. And the breath of God is his spirit that he has sent to earth to use us, his instruments, for the glory of his kingdom. God wants to breathe his spirit through us. And many of us can hinder his spirit. Because we stop doing the actual work of the kingdom. God is calling us to preach the gospel. The basic, simple message of the kingdom of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. To baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To teach them. Teach them what? To observe what Jesus Christ has commanded. And then there is therefore no, not, no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit. That's the simple message. The gospel is simple. And you say, but pastor, where do I go to preach? Who has a family here? You live somewhere. First... Don't try to go out to the streets to preach. I'm going to teach you guys something. I'm going to teach you guys the order. If you can't be a prime example in your own house, because Satan will destroy you. If you cannot be an, a, a preacher or an evangelist or a minister or a pastor, right? It, it has every, every, every call you can think about in your own house. If you can't be a prophet in your own house, a priest in your own house, don't try to do it anywhere else. So it starts in your house. Jesus told the disciples, start in Jerusalem. And then from there go. He says, wait there. Start there. Start in your house. Start with your family. Then start with your neighbors. Don't try to go to Thailand to preach to people you never met. When you have a whole street with like a hundred houses and you never preach to nobody in your street, come on now. Come on now, this got to stop. Don't try to go to China where they will really kill you if you can't go to the hood. 
So, so now from, from, your, from your house, you start in your street. From your street, then you go to neighborhoods. And God sees the faithfulness that you're faithful with small things, then God will make you rule over larger things. Don't go to New York to preach the gospel at Times Square when you can't even go to downtown in your, in your, in your own city. Don't do it. Come on now. That looks bad. Start in your house. Matter of fact, start in your prayer closet. Preach to yourself. I feel the glory. Preach to your own self. Stand in the mirror and preach to yourself till you're saved. Till you're walking in holiness. Till you're walking in love. Because if Satan sees that you can't love your neighbor, that you can't love people, when you go out there, He's going to be like, I don't see the image of Christ in you, so you're an easy target. I'm going to eat you for breakfast. <laughs> because the devils, the demons, no. They see in the spirit. They either see Christ in us or Christ is not in us. And you got people that are possessing the street, and you try to, and nobody manifests it because the Christ is not in you. When we were going evangelizing, people would start manifesting in the street. I'd be like, wow, she had a snake inside of her. It's because they see Christ. You can't do it without power. It makes no sense. So stay in a place of humbling yourself and receiving what God has for you. Then start in your house. Win the house over. Be a priest in your house. Be an example. And then from there, you got neighbors. You got people all around you that need to hear about Jesus. And then from there, God will open doors that you cannot open on yourself. I told you guys the story about this. There was a man that was hyped up. Like, yeah, I'm going to go preach. I'm going to go preach. I'm going to go preach. God, wherever, wherever you want me to preach, I'll preach. He was excited. I'll preach everywhere. I'll preach in the mall. I'll preach anywhere you send me, God, I'll preach. And he had an idea. You know what I'll do? I'll, 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 I'll run an airplane. I'll have a pilot fly, fly me. I'll get a parachute, and I'll jump off the airplane. And he was in the airplane for like an hour, and he was praying to God, God, wherever I land, I will preach the gospel there, blah, 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 blah. He says, okay, I'm jumping off. He jumps. And he was praying while he was, he opened the parachute. And when he landed, you know where he landed? His own backyard. And God was saying, you start in your house. God was saying, start in your house. Start in your house. And this started in the house. God taught me this throughout my years because I, I was evangelizing. Everywhere I go, I would evangelize. Start in your house. I started off as an evangelist, so I know. I know the importance of when you go out there, you can't just go out there. I know the Bible says go, but he told his disciples to go. I want you guys, don't get the scriptures twisted. He told those who were following him, who were with him three years under his covering, under his teaching, he told them to go. He said, go. Because now they, 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 were, they were filled. They were, they were taught. But before, he says, first wait. First wait. Imagine there's a war going on, and I'll be like, sister, go. You're like, okay, I go. You go, you go out, no weapons, no armor. You're like, what just happened? Right? But you know what I'll do? I'll train you. I'll teach you how to use the M16. God, forgive me, I'm saying that online. I'll teach you how to use the weapon. I'll train you in the weapon. You'll feel comfortable. And then I'll say, now go. So now when the enemy sees that she's trained, right? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. She'll be on the ground like that. <laughs> right? She ain't just going to be standing there like an easy target. I, I taught you. And that's what the church is there for. Many people don't train the church how to go. The church is there to equip you, to teach you how to go. It's a boot camp. Satan loves when, 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 when untrained people go because they become easy targets. You are light. You are light. God is with you. But Satan can, if you're not prepared, destroy you. It's a real war. It's real. 
I'm not going to give the whole thing and I'm finished now, but when we started the church in London, God had told me, I've, I've, we, we, we've had many encounters with people who practice witchcraft who would come to try to destroy us. And we would constantly find bones and skeletons in the front of our doors of the church, and we would have to clean it every week and throw it. Like, I'll laugh. I'll just scoop it up and I'll throw it. We would find things because people were trying to destroy us. And then on one time, I had a service, and as I was driving, the Lord said, go to a sister's house. Go, go to this person's house. I said, you want me to go? To, I, I, I heard the Holy Spirit in my spirit. He said, turn around and go to that house. I went to the house right after search. I was like, you sure, God? He's like, yes. Because when God speaks, he speaks. Who is it? I, I didn't say nothing. She opened up, and when she opened up, there was an altar with our, with our flyers laid all around it, candles and everything. So this is warfare. This is real. This, this ain't no joke. This is real. And to make it short, I looked at her and said, if you want to come to our church, Friday we'll be here with a group of people. All oh, this is going to get destroyed. You've been caught. She was like, right? Right? You was there. Yeah. I was there. Man, we took out, we took out like five boxes full, full of witchcraft or items. Daggers, balls, crystals, um, scrying mirrors, statues that the Holy Spirit told me. He showed me the night before when we were praying in, a, in, a, in the vision. He showed me that two, be- two balls fell out of her stomach like crystal balls, and they were shaking like this. There was two. So then after we got done with everything, I was like, there's, there's, there's two more things you got in this house that the Lord showed me. Two. And this, is, and this is the power that's in your house right now. What is it? Two. She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, I was like two. She's like, oh, yeah. We went to the basement. We took, we took out two black statues with chains and necklaces on them. And we broke them. And when we broke the statue, a little vapor came out of it, like a spirit. We were, we were stomping it. We, I got it on video. We were breaking them. We were smashing them. And we were laughing at Satan. Because we came to take territory. We came to destroy. Listen, Satan is trying to destroy you. Why not destroy him? Jesus said this, for this reason I have come to destroy the works of Satan. So many people think, oh, pastor, you're weird. You're always talking about demons and devils. That's the kingdom. It's two kingdoms, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Hello. Two reasons why Christ came to save that which is lost and to destroy the works of Satan. And as long as I'm breathing, as long as I'm alive, I'm going to make it my priority to destroy the works of Satan. This is a real war. You are, uh, you are part of the army of the living God. And everywhere there's an army, spies are being sent. There are spies being sent to see what's happening. Because we are the army of the living God. So when you leave this place, because we're still talking about being soberly minded because the enemy comes like a lion seeking to devour. When you leave this place, understand that the enemy is real and he wants to destroy. And he wants to destroy. This is funny because the campaign of Joe Biden, the campaign said... um, Something about, the, oh, the battle for the soul of America. And now the campaign of, of um, Donald Trump says, save America. It's a spiritual battle. This, these things cannot pass our eyes and, and we not see these things. Rise to your feet. I want you guys to understand that the purpose of the church, it's not just so that you could come to a place, worship God. Yes, that's a part of it. You worship God, you give him glory, but it's so that you can grow and that you can be prepared for the war. Not just any war, but a spiritual war. Because it's literally a battle for the souls. And our enemy is trying to destroy the souls. Because he knows his time is up and he's trying to take as many people with him as possible. That's why they're using... 
TV music. That's why now most of the music videos, they're making fun of Jesus. There was one guy on another music video that just came out that he was crucified and he said something about Jesus. The, the enemy's coming out of his place. He's not hiding no more. He's making it, he's opening himself up to let you know it's real. This is real war. The battle was real. So I say this so that you and I can remain soberly minded. Be careful what you allow in your dwelling. Be careful who you allow in your circle. Be very careful. Be cautious. And walk in the light. Don't do the things no more that offend Christ. You know, it takes a lot for me to say that because I know this can offend people, but if I can save your soul or Christ can save your soul through me by just a little bit of offense, I'm happy with that. If you say, I can't go to this church no more because they're just preaching hardcore, I'm okay with that, but at least you leave with the sense knowing that God taught to you today through his servant, that I became an instrument that God can blow his breath through. And if I could get some of you to sway to the melody of what God is breathing, I'm, I'm cool with that. Because God's melody is playing. And when his melody is playing, we're swaying to it. There's two sways. The Bible talks about the sway of the world. That many who are in the world are under the sway of Satan. It says that. They're under Satan's sway. But how about we get under God's sway? Amen. Who in this place says, I want to recommit my heart to Jesus. If you're out there and you haven't recommitted yourself and you want to do it today, I welcome you to the front. Anybody there? The children's class could be dismissed. Everybody could come in. We're going to pray. Somebody put a, a little instrumental back there. Is there anybody else that says, I want to recommit? I want to take part of this army of God. Father, Father, we bless your name. Father, that every satanic yoke under the sound of my voice be broken right now. Not by strength, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. I pray the fire of the Holy Spirit to begin to burn, to burn everything that God did not plant inside of you. Let the strength of the Holy Spirit fill you right now. Be filled. Be filled with fresh oil, sister. Be filled with fresh oil right now. That every part of you be filled right now in Jesus Christ's name. That all your brokenness be healed. That all the years that the enemy has stolen from you be returned that everything that the locust and the canker worm has eaten that God has blessed you with your harvest be returned to you in Jesus name and the enemy has been trying to curse the works of your hands let that curse be removed right now in Jesus name he's been trying to take your praise but God says open up open up your heart right now he sees your struggles. He sees your pain. He bottles up your tears. He knows you want to try. And the enemy has been stopping you. But today the Holy Spirit says, I will hold your hand. And I will walk with you. And God says, I will be your shield. I will be your strength. I will protect you. Call on me, says the Lord. I will be a tower to you in the storm. Run to me, says the Lord. I am your help. The Lord is your help. Peace, says God. Say, Lord, forgive me. I repent. I come to you with all that I am. 
Take me as I am, God. I'm weak, but you are strong. I need your help. Strengthen me. Forgive me for my failures. Intervene. Guide me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to overcome. I don't want to fail you no more. I want to move forward. I don't want to be stuck no more. Break me free. Open the prison doors that I may praise you. Wash me and I should be whiter than snow. I cover you now with the blood of Jesus. God, you see her heart. The Lord forgives you. The Lord forgives you. He says, go and sin no more. He says, I don't accuse you. Some woman come up here and give her a hug. I need the woman of the house, godly woman, come up here. Surround her. Surround her with love. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? You need the Holy Spirit to touch you today. Is there anybody else? The altar is open right now. If it's strength that you need, if you need strength for the way, then I'm going to pray for your strength. If you need courage, I want to pay for your courage. Praise the Lord. If you need prayer for a family member, stand in the gap for them, and you'll be the touching point. Is there somebody in this house that says, I want that Christ? I want to be touched today. I want to fill in. I need to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. I've been struggling. I want that hunger again. I want the hunger of the Holy Spirit inside of me. Is there anybody else? Maybe, maybe you've been struggling with hunger, hunger for God. And God says, I'll put that hunger inside of you. Now is the time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What you need prayer for, sister? Strength. Pray for strength, but I'm also going to pray that God gives you a hunger. He's going to give you a hunger. Raise your hands. God is going to give you a hunger for him. I feel the power of God all over you right now. Father, place a hunger inside of her. Sister Tracy, put your hands on her stomach for me. Give her a hunger, God, for you right now. An increase of hunger right now. A stirring for godly things. That your eyes will look towards Jesus. Don't look to the left or to the right, says the Lord, but look towards me. I've seen you've been trying. I've seen you've been taking steps forward, but then you take a few steps back. God says, take no more steps back. Jesus says, come forward. Jesus says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. And I will show you things to come. Be strengthened in the name of Jesus. Open up your mouth and say, put the hunger in me, God. The hunger for your word. The hunger for your presence. Increase my hunger. Stir me up, God. I don't want to be the same. 
Stir up the waters inside of me. I don't want to be stagnant no more. Spirit of God, flow. Spirit of God, flow. I thirst for you, God. Like the woman at the well, I've been drawing for natural water. But when she encountered you, Lord, she found the water of life. She found what she was looking for. She left her water pots because she found the living water. I want that living water, Jesus. I no longer want to carry my water pots. I want to be the water vessel to carry the living water. Put that water in me, Jesus. I believe in you. Now it's, now it's done. Hunger for the word of God. Hunger for the spirit of God. Hunger for the presence of God. Increase. Increase. Be increased in Jesus' name. I increase your spirit right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I increase your faith right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I increase your hunger right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We bless the holy name of Jesus. Church praying. Church praying. The Holy Spirit is here, church. Hallelujah. We worship the name of the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. Everybody put your hands on your hearts and say, Lord God, fill this heart. Fill me with hunger. Fill me with your presence. I don't want to be the same. I don't want to leave this place empty. I want to leave filled. Remove all pride. And fill me with love. Fill me with the spirit of humbleness. Fill me with virtue. With the power of Jesus Christ. Increase my faith. Increase my love. I don't want to be the same. I want to love others. Show me your ways. Show me your ways. Restore me. Restore to me joy. The joy of salvation. Restore my house. Restore my family. Restore my relationships. Do it, Lord. I will follow you. I will serve you. I will worship you all the days of my life. Break anything that's not allowing me to worship. Break it away. Remove the old man. Remove the heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh. Give me the mind of Christ. And this day, God, I give you glory. I give you praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just begin to worship God there. Invite his presence and you are welcome, Jesus. Stir us up, Jesus. You are welcome in this house, Jesus. I feel like there's something that God wants to do here today. I don't know how comfortable people feel, but I feel like God wants us to come to the front. I know this is going to sound weird, but God wants us to come to the front and hold hands. I feel like God wants us to come. There's power in unity. I said there's power in unity. There's power in unity. There's power in unity. A church that prays together is an unstoppable church. A church that prays together is an unstoppable church. And whoever wants to speak in tongues, you're, you're more than welcome. That's fine. If you want to pray out loud, if you want to pray in silent, that's fine. But we need to offer up this prayer unto God. My mom, come up here, please. We need everybody to form a chain. 
Put, and, and if you can't fit back here, put your hands on somebody. Amen? Put your hands on somebody or hold somebody's hands. But there's power in unity. You got to understand that when we form a chain like this, when we form a chain like this, that chain cannot be broken. A one cord string is easily broken. But when there's a community of people together, there's power in that. There's power in this. So we're going to pray out loud. We're going to pray. Father, we just say thank you for this day. Look at this. These are your saints, God. Pray out loud, church. And they come before your throne today, God. And we say thank you. Let there be a transformation in the spirits and hearts of the people, God. Let there be a fire that cannot be turned off. I see fire coming down on some of you right now. There's fire coming down right now on some of you. Let there be a fire in us, God, that cannot be turned off. Let there be a dwelling, God, a dwelling place in us for you, God. And let the fire shine in darkness, God, and expose all darkness, God. Receive strength, saints, right now. Let the glory of the Lord fill you right now in Jesus' name. That every attack Satan has against this church, it will not prevail. For we are built upon the rock of Jesus Christ. We are the church of Jesus Christ. You are the saints of God. Let the wind, let the breath of God fill you right now, church. For God has given you power and authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. Father, we bless you in this day. Father, we give you glory. Hallelujah. 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 Let the Spirit of God fill your hearts right now. Let the love of God touch you right now. Let the presence of God wrap you right now. Be wrapped with the love of God. Be touched by the love of God. We thank you, Jesus, for you are in this place, Jesus. You are in this place, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, Holy King. Thank you for these beautiful saints, God. I cover every one of them now. I cover them under the mantle of fire, the mantle of Jesus Christ. I cover them right now with the love of God with the presence of God's Holy Spirit, with truth and righteousness. Be dressed with the light of Jesus Christ. Be dressed with light right now. Let the light of Jesus Christ wrap you up and living water will flow through your stomach as you believe through your hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Jesus. Thank him, hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Give him a hand of applause. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I was, as I was praying, I saw, I saw the Lord let down a mantle of light, and that mantle of light was wrapping the church. I saw the mantle of light coming down. It was like God was dressing us with light. He was armoring you with light. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I'll give announcements and we'll dismiss you. God is good. God is good. God is good. I'm going to give you announcements. We'll, we'll, we'll collect offering if you got your offering. If you got a tithe. If you don't got nothing to give, don't feel bad. You could give your time by helping us straighten chairs out and sweep the floors and whatnot. But give something to God. Give your praise. Give something, right? Give your time. There's things to be done in this house. Amen? But if you got your, your tithes or your offerings, you may come up and give on to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, we usually have a prayer on Tuesdays. I will not be here Tuesday. I'll be in New York. Um, Wednesday, we do have Bible study here. 6 p.m., 6.30 6.30, you can start arriving at 6 p.m. Bible study, and we're diving into the book or the letter, the epistle of Peter, and um, we're going to be in chapter 2, and Friday, we have prayer here at 6 p.m., Friday prayer. I'm going to tell you guys something. Prayer is very important. Whether you do it in your house or you do it corporately, it is our life support, okay? It is the umbilical cord that keeps us attached to, to the Father, that keeps us nur nurtured and, and filled, Prayer, prayer and study and prayer and reading. So it's very important that you remain in a place of discipleship. This is how we grow discipline, that we be discipled by the Holy Spirit and by those who the Holy Spirit has entrusted to lead you, the church. Amen. So it's very important that we that we learn the scriptures, whether you do it in your own house, in your own time, but also as a corporate group, we come together on Wednesday for discipleship classes but it's also important that we come together, whether you do it in your own house, but also together as a group, that we come together in prayer. Because where two or three are gathered, Christ is there. And you know, if Christ is there, we're, we're pulling down strongholds. Amen? So Friday, 6 p.m., we have prayer here. Saturday, we won't be having prayer because Brother Tremaine opens up on Saturdays, and he's going to be in South Carolina. So, so Saturday and Tuesday, this week, we will not have prayer. But Friday, we'll have prayer. Wednesday, we'll have Bible study. And... Bring somebody next week. Tell somebody about what God is doing at Life Water Church. Tell somebody that this place preaches truth and that in this place you will grow. People need to know because not everybody is preaching truth out there. So if you find it in your heart that, hey, I trust this teaching. I trust that they teach the truth. Don't be afraid to invite people. People need to hear what God has to say. And somebody say next week. If, if you're in a marriage or if you're in a relationship or something that has to do with marriage, we'll be teaching on marriage next week. It's very important. Bring, bring somebody. Bring somebody that's not even in a relationship. Maybe they need to be taught on marriage or pre-marriage. God wants to teach and edify his people to do things the right way. Where the, the church is called to edify each other, not just in a spiritual manner, but also a physical manner. That if we could help somebody's marriage, that's what we want to do. If we could help somebody raise up children the right way in a godly manner, 
that's what we want to do. We're supposed to, we're supposed to be an institute that will teach the body of Christ how to walk this walk of life. Amen? So, Father, we bless the children here today, God. We bless the adults, these beautiful saints that are here today. We know that you are with them, God. May your face always shine upon them. Bless their coming in and their coming out. Bless them on their way, Father God. I pray that everything they put their hands to do be blessed according to your will, God. I pray that they grow and that they be protected under the shadows of your wings, Father, and that the light of the word will always guide their paths. I pray that every trap that the enemy has for them be canceled, that it be exposed by the light. Hallelujah. And I pray, God, that they take every step carefully, God, knowing that you're with them, but knowing that they have an adversary, the enemy of their souls. So, Father God, I bless them now in the name of Jesus. Multiply them, that they be fruitful in every aspect and area of their lives, Father. Thank you, God, because you are faithful and you are true, and you are with us always, even to the ends of the age. God's people say, you may be dismissed.